So first off, I just want to say welcome to the ending your internship on a high note presentation. Um, we're glad you all could join us this evening. Um, it is one of the few times it's actually evening for all of us. So congratulations. Um, usually we do these at noon on the West Coast and it's three o'clock here, but this time it's nighttime for all. So congratulations. Um, so the goal of today's presentation is to talk about how to end your internship on the right note, um, generally a high note, that's what you're going for. Um, how to utilize your experience going forward, how your internship can be added to your resume, how the contacts you've made from your internship can be utilized. Um, and then we're gonna talk about like the proper way to say farewell to people. Um, so before we get going with the presentation, I just wanted to quickly introduce my colleagues. Uh, we have Nicole who works for the UC Federal and Governmental Relations um, at UCDC. Um, and then my other colleague, Yena, who works as a coordinator of special events and alumni outreach here at UCDC. Um, and when they start talking, they're gonna give you their whole spiel about who they are and their background. So um, without further ado, I am Mike Nieto. Um, most of you probably know me. I'm recognizing a lot of names on the attendees list already. Um, for those that don't know who I am, I work in the UCDC program in the academic internship team. So I am the one of the versions of Chantal and Alfreda. Um, they are the seniors, I am the younger and newer person. So um, I'm glad to be here tonight. Um, I went to Chico State, I am not a UC alum. I did not uh, attend a University of California, but uh, my sister did attend UC Davis and actually participated in the UCDC program way back in the year 2000. Um, and so I am very familiar with how your internships work and function as well as working here. Um, what I'm excited about is I actually did an internship myself, and I did my internship at KTVU Channel 2 News in Oakland. Uh, for the Bay Area people, you know what that is. Um, it was a great internship experience. It is not obviously the career path that I have ended up on. Um, I was a media arts, television, and broadcasting major. I did an internship um, twice, and the second time I officially decided that is not the field I want to be in. Um, but the important thing was I learned valuable skills in that internship. That internship was an amazing experience for me. Um, I made a lot of really good contacts, some of which worked for me later in life at different career points. Um, and so that's kind of the importance of the wrapping up of your internship. That's why it's valuable to wrap it up and leave it on the right tone. Um, the number one way to leave a good impression when you leave and to do it properly is to exit gracefully. Um, Everyone knows that feeling when you wrap something up. We all remember senior year of high school when you're walking out of the classroom and you just wanted to just run out there, throw all your papers in the air and just be done with it and set fire to the building behind you and you're done. You don't wanna do that in your internship. Uh, this internship, the people you work with, the people you are communicating with on a daily basis, know people in DC and know people in New York and they know people in San Francisco, they know people in Los Angeles, they know people everywhere. If you burn a bridge now, it will follow you for the rest of your career. So you wanna make sure when you leave, you leave on a good tone, you are thankful, you are appreciative. Even if there were some bumps in the road, you wanna make sure that you're leaving a good impression of yourself. Um, best way to do that is to finish all of your tasks. Um, if you've been assigned projects, you want to make sure that they're done and not just done, but that they're done well. Uh, all the T's crossed, all the I's dotted, that the quality of your work is relevant and there and visible. If you are unable to finish a project, you want to make sure you let your supervisor know that you didn't finish the project. And when you let them know, you want to present them with a list of things that remains to be done with details on what needs to be done and suggestions on how to do them, because it is very likely that that project is now going to be handed to the next intern. Um, and I'm sure many of you started your internship and know what it's like to be given a project that's half done or half completed without any clue as to how to finish it. And so you will be helping the next version of you by doing that. Also, sometimes that project is not completed by an intern, it's completed by your supervisor and you don't want to be gone and you're on break and celebrating the end of your internship and your supervisor to be sitting there grumbling 
over the fact that you weren't able to finish a project and they're now stuck doing it. But if you leave it with these nice instructions and layout, they will love you, they will appreciate you and know exactly who you are in five, 10 years down the road. Um, the other thing you wanna make sure you do is that you say farewell to people. This remote experience has been interesting for all of us. Um, everyone is adapted to this new environment. Everyone's figuring it out. You have been on Zoom calls with people multiple times a week. You've been on phone calls. You've been emailing with them. You don't want to just disappear. Uh, that doesn't, people won't remember you. They won't know who you are. So you want to send some sort of email saying goodbye to all the people you've worked with, um, saying how much you appreciate the support they've given you, saying that you will have good memories of XYZ project, throw a little joke in there so they remember and they can laugh at you. Um, but again, you wanna leave with a, on a nice tone, appreciative, and Yenna is actually gonna talk about thank yous later on in this presentation. So she's gonna go into far more detail on that. The other thing you wanna do, and just before I get into it, I want you all to open up the chat box um, on the bottom of your screen. And if you already have plans to speak with your supervisor, before you leave your job, throw a one in the chat box, just so we know that you are a listening, but also if you have plans to speak with your supervisor. Um, so just let us know if you have any plans and it always takes a few seconds to show up. If you don't have plans to meet with your supervisor, you should probably plan after this call to send your supervisor an email asking if they have time to meet. Um, this is a chance for you to really go into detail with your supervisor. You say, dear Steve, I'm making up a supervisor's name here. Dear Steve, I'd love to chat with you 15, 30 minutes, go over my, the details of my internship, how it went from your perspective, um, how I did, any constructive feedback you can give me. And when you are talking to your supervisor about this, make sure that you are listening with an open mind. It is very easy to get defensive and to immediately run into all these excuses to why something didn't go smoothly, but you're asking for feedback and you wanna be ready to listen. Otherwise, they're not gonna give you all the feedback they have. This is a great learning opportunity for you to improve your skills, to improve your communication, and to really leave a good impression with your supervisor because you were willing to sit down and listen to their complaints about you, which is kind of the rough word for it but you need to listen. And that's how you improve for your next internship, for your next job and for your career. Um, the other thing that's great about it is this is also going to be an opportunity for you to give feedback. Rarely will a supervisor just sit there and say, you did this wrong, you did that wrong, you did this good, you were all right at that and not ask, what did you think of it from your opinion? So again, the pandemic put us all in this strange position where we're all working remote, we're all learning how to do this this is your chance to turn to your supervisor and say, this could have been better, that could have been better, but this was really good and this was really good and you were a great supervisor and I really appreciated all the time you spent with me through the last 10 weeks. Again, leaving that good impression, leaving it on a good note. Um, and then this is also the chance for you in that conversation, if you did find the internship in a field or in an area that you really like to say something like, this has cemented the idea to me that this is a career path I would really like to go down. If you hear of any new opportunities in this field, please let me know, I'm graduating next term. And that is the chance for you to start making that bridge from your internship to your career, which Nicole is gonna talk about more in a minute. Um, the other thing you wanna talk about with your supervisor is asking them what you can keep from your internship. So whether it be a blog post, whether it be research materials, whether it be documents you created, those are all things that you're gonna wanna keep um, so you have them available to yourself so that when you apply for your next job and they say, provide us with a writing sample, or if you're doing something and they say, hey, tell us about a time you actually have a document that you've already done, a research paper that you've done, a bill that you helped to write, whatever it may be, this is your chance to ask if it's okay for you to keep copies of them. And that is important because for those of you working in federal government, for those of you working on the Hill, uh, depending on what you're doing in the research, some of the stuff you're working on 
might actually be confidential information and you wanna make sure that you're not taking anything that you shouldn't when you're leaving your internship. Um, now, the other thing to worry, think about is your resume. Now you've just completed a 10 week internship. You, you know what you did, you know what you worked on. Six months down the road, when you graduate from college, a year from now, two years from now, when you start applying to jobs and you're trying to update your resume, you may not remember everything that you worked on. So now is your time to start updating your resume. And a tip of advice that I always give people as you start your career out, um, whether what, no matter what field you're starting it out, create what's called a master resume. And this is a resume that is only for you. And in this resume, you wanna have everything that you do every bullet point of every project you've worked on, every statistic you can find on the work you did, everything goes on this resume and it can be 20, 30 bullets, it doesn't matter. This is your master. And then from now on, when you're applying to jobs, you're not just picking from four or five bullet points, you're looking at a job description and looking at what they're looking for. And you're pulling the bullet points or the projects or the things that you've done in every job that apply to that new job. Um, and the importance of this is for a lot of you, you remember when you were applying for your current internship, a lot of you didn't have necessarily experience that was perfectly lined up with the internship you were applying for. You might have worked as a food worker at the Bell Memorial Union or at the Student Services Center, um, and you're applying for a job on the Hill. It doesn't line up, but you want to have all of those bullet points so that if on that job description, it says, did research for a publicized document you can actually look at your bullets and say, oh, I actually did that. Granted, it was a different field, but I know what I'm doing. And that's the bullet point you're gonna put on your next resume. Um, and again, every job goes on that resume. Every bullet point goes on that resume. My KTVU Channel 2 News intern is not on my resume any longer because I am in student services. Um, that KTVU job is not relevant to what I'm doing, but I have referenced it in cover letters because there were skills or things I did in that job that might have been relevant for the internship or the job that I was applying for. So that's just something to think about. Um, and the other thing I recommend is at the end of your meeting with your supervisor, going back to that bullet point, you can talk to them, you can show them a copy of your resume and just say, having completed this internship, do you have any feedback for me on how I can improve my resume? And this is another chance for you to improve on that and to use that expertise of the person that you've been working with and working for. Um, so that all being said, I am gonna hand things over now to my colleague, Nicole, to talk more about bridging that gap from the internship to whatever it may be afterwards. Thanks, Mike. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Nicole Carlotto, the Director of Communications and Advocacy in uh, UC's Office of Federal Governmental Relations. Uh, so in what would be any other time, um, I would actually be located on the second floor of the UCDC building and seeing all of you um, every day in the halls. Uh, so, you know, similar to you still adjusting to this virtual environment. Um, so just a quick background about what I do um, with UC. So the Federal Governmental Relations Office is um, the advocacy arm for the university. So we work with uh, Congress, the administration, and the agencies. Um, and we actually also work closely with UCDC, and we always have UCDC interns in our office. Um, I think there's only one period of time where I can think that we didn't have interns. Um, but otherwise, that is, you know, the work that you guys do working with us is such a crucial part. And so I was really excited that Mike reached out and asked me to be here this evening. So I've been with UC for about five years now, but my history with both this office and UCDC goes back well beyond that, I am a UC Berkeley alum, and I actually participated in Berkeley's Cal in the Capital program, which is their summer version um, of the internship in DC program. And funny, funny about thing about that, they actually interned in UC's Office of Federal Governmental Relations. So I started my uh, Washington DC career interning in the office I now work for. Uh, so when Mike said, asked me to talk about translating your internship into a job or into something else. Um, I was really excited to talk about that because I've been very fortunate both to um, be able to do that in the long run and then also um, in some of my, you know, before ending, ending up where I am now, 
I also had the um, privilege of serving as an internship supervisor. And um, I actually am also excited to share that one of my former interns is now one of my colleagues in uh, federal governmental relations. So uh, when Mike says that someone who you're interning with or working with right now knows someone in New York or in LA, uh, he's not exaggerating. Washington DC is a very small city, but um, a really great one. Uh, so, you know, as you've been here, been in your internships for these past um, going on 10 weeks, almost there, you know, you've met a lot of people, you both inside your organization and elsewhere. And so I think, you know, I'm sure you've heard this a lot, but, you know, networking is key. And, you know, I do agree with that. Um, those relationships are important, but I like to look at it as more of relationships and what that what those are in the long run. You know, not everyone you meet is going to be someone that you're necessarily going to stay in great contact with. And that's, in my opinion, uh, that's okay. You know, what are your career goals? Who did you connect with when you were, um, you know, at your internship? Those are the people that you really should focus on, you know, maintaining those real genuine connections with. Um, you know, they can really be helpful as you're thinking about what's next, you know. Um, Something that I really, I really like to see with our former interns is, uh, you know, when they reach back out. So for, I'll give you an example. Um, I have, there's an intern that worked in our office about, I think it's almost three years ago now, but every time she sees something in the news that relates to what she did in our office or an announcement that relates to um, UC and the federal intersection, she actually shoots me an email. She's like, oh, hey, I saw this, you know, were you involved in it? Or, you know, I just wanted to let you know how things are going. I graduated and um, I've actually now served as a reference for her on multiple times, both um, when she was applying for grad school and in a recent um, job interview. And so those are the type of meaningful relationships that, that I say when I say, you know, think about those networks. Um, you know, that, I'll be honest, that takes a lot of work. Um, it's, it's time consuming, but at the end of the day, um, you know, they can be really meaningful, not just for what's next in your career, but really these are people who can sometimes turn into mentors. Uh, when I was working as an intern in um, UC's, we call it FGR for short, uh, federal office, um, you know, I actually applied this same, this same strategy, the same tactic. Um, some of, you know, the head of our office now is someone who I've now known for over 10 years. Um, I would, you know, shoot him an email every so often and check in. When I moved back to BC after after college, I reached out to him to get coffee. Um, you know, actually, my internship supervisor in the office, uh, who's no longer there, uh, who is no longer there anymore, uh, she actually just called me this afternoon because she was wanted to do a drive-by wave because she was in my neighborhood. Um, and so, you never know where these relationships and connections are going to go. Um, my time in DC actually led me back to an internship on, on Berkeley's campus and their government and community relations office. And um, the woman there who helps run that office, who I now work with um, in my professional capacity is also someone who is my mentor. So when I was looking to move to DC, she is someone that I was asking for, you know, for help and advice and um, you know, something that Mike said that really uh, also resonated with me is, uh, you know, he, he said, um, okay, well, he had said it, it was great, and now it's escaped my mind. I'll come back to it. Um, but so, you know, this woman who I met and who, who, who helped me in an internship capacity then helped me meet people in Washington, D.C. Ah, I get it, I remember now. So, you know, it's not just about, you know, her, you know, the people who can help you and what, what, they're, what they're doing, but it's also, you know, are there other people that they can introduce you to who can help expand what, you know, what you know, and I'm not being very clear. What I mean by that is, you know, for example, now, um, I love to meet with all of our interns who come into our office and, you know, but my expertise is, is more in the communications, public affairs, and that's not always where their interests are. But if they say, oh, you know, I'm really interested in, education policy, then I might, then I will think, okay, well, who do I know in education policy, particularly if they're like, you know, I'm a graduating, I might want to be on Capitol Hill. So then I start thinking, okay, is there anyone that I can connect them with, you know, dependent upon your relationship with those folks in, in, um, in your internship office, those are questions that you can ask, you know, I'm interested in X, Y, and Z. Do you, you know, can you think of anyone that you'd recommend I reach out to or that you could connect me to? 
Um, it's all about, you know, those connections. And, um, you know, if you've had that, those relations, if you've been building those relationships up for almost 10 weeks now, they know how hard you work, they know what you bring to the table, and they're willing to go out and say, sure, yeah, let me make a connection. Um, I've actually had people reach out to me um, on LinkedIn because they saw, oh, you know, I see that you used to work here. You know, I'm thinking of applying for a job. Do you have any advice? Um, it's the same type of thing. Um, and so, you know, looking for any degree opportunity you can do to, to, to reach out, to keep those connections um, fresh. You know, I think that really leads back into one of the other points that I know Mike and I had talked about wanting to share, which is th that staying in touch. It really is important to stay in touch. You know, if you haven't already, add your supervisor and your other coworkers on LinkedIn. Um, you know, if the organization is one that you, you want to stay connected to, consider setting up a Google alert. Um, that also would come into play for if you want to, you know, if you see this great news thing that comes out about X, Y, and Z organization, you can use that in an email to your former supervisor or to whomever is appropriate. You know, oh, I saw this. Uh, you know, were you involved or this is great. I'm excited to see this happen. Um, you know, anything to kind of help bridge that communication. Um, you know, that said, you know, DC, as with, you know, pretty everywhere, people are really busy. So, you know, you have to balance, um, you know, your messages. So you're not, you know, coming across as too aggressive. Um, you know, I think that that's something you learn over time, but People's email inboxes get overflow, you know, or they overflow. Sometimes emails slip through, that's okay. Give it a little bit of time. Try pinging them again in a few weeks. Um, the idea is to just make sure that they remember you um, and remember you in a positive way. Um, DC is a really small city, but it's also a really great city. And it's a town where people want to help others. Um, you know, I feel very fortunate that we you know, get to have so many wonderful interns that come and work in our office and get to have such a breadth of experience. And, um, you know, it was you know, just this, I can think of in the last two months, I've been, you know, approached to write a letter of recommendation for grad school or serve as a reference for a job. And, you know, those are the, those are the interns I remember because those are also the ones they're coming back sometimes a couple years later, but it's not the first time they're coming back in those two years. So um, that's something to think about as well. Um, and with that, I think I will turn it over to Yana. Great, thank you, Nicole. So I have to apologize. My computer is incredibly laggy right now. So Mike, you let me know if it's really bad on your end. And so I'll just turn off the video. But um, hi everyone, I am Yana and I'm the coordinator of special events and alumni outreach. A bit about me, I grew up in Los Angeles and went to school in California. I also graduated from Berkeley uh, in 2016 and have since worked in Boston and have been in DC for less than two years. And I've been working for UC DC for a little over a year now. Um, and I've had tons of internships in college and have bounced around quite a bit after college. I've worked as an immigration paralegal and then transitioned to working in fundraising at the Boston Courthouse and worked in fundraising at a nonprofit in DC and then kind of landed um, here at UC DC. So I'm excited to um, present to you all tonight, um, but you all should have received a thank you card in your care package uh, about two, three weeks ago when we sent it so it's easier for folks to um, send a thank you card to supervisors. And if you haven't received it or by chance lost it, um, don't worry, I think any card will do from a local CVS or Walgreens um, or there's we'll be going over different mediums, but, um, but so I've had multiple internships in college and many years out of school, I still keep in touch with certain folks. A lot of my internship supervisors were quite instrumental when, when I made my move to Boston. They not only served as references for my jobs, but they also connected me to their network when I was job searching. Um, so if there's one thing I've learned over the many years of um, internships and jobs is that little things really go a long way and helping you stand out. And this goes for writing a thank you note. So in terms of how you wanna go about sending a thank you note, you can either personalize it by sending a handwritten card. 
I think it's it's pretty tricky right now since a lot of folks are working from home and it might be a tad bit awkward for you to ask your supervisor for their home address. So if you feel comfortable asking your supervisor, like, thank you so much for this memorable term working for X organization, I'd like to mail over a thank you card with the office address work for you. You can write something like that, or you can just send them a nice email. Um, with your thank you no entailed. And so I think both are perfectly acceptable. And the no can start out with, um, you know, thank you so much for the opportunity to work on your team this term, or it's been a pleasure working with you and learning from the team. And I think it's important to dive into the um, specific details of your experience. You know, ask yourself what your favorite moments of your internship was or um, what projects you're proud of. Perhaps your um, supervisor shared some key advice. You know, you should include all that. And then make it clear that uh, you love to stay connected by providing your personal contact information. So if you've been communicating with the team with the um, organizational email, then include your personal email account. So I, I have a, an example to share with you all. So um, I quickly drafted a thank you email. Let me see if I can, let's see. Sorry, things are a little bit. What I can do actually, this might be easier. I will just drop the contents in the chat because it's incredibly laggy. Everything is just freezing up. Mike, did I look okay though? <laughs> you looked great, Yana. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's see, let me share this to all folks. Okay, formatting is a bit wonky. So this is me right, me as an intern writing to Mike, my supervisor. So I wrote, um, dear Mike, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to work in your academic department this fall. It's been a great learning experience for me th these past couple of weeks working within such a collaborative environment. I cannot thank you enough for the constant feedback and support. I absolutely loved building upon UCDC's internship database this summer and organizing the internship informational session. Thank you for allowing me to spearhead that event. Um, I know it will help me in my event planning career going forward. While the internship program has drawn to a close, I would love to stay in touch. If an opportunity presents itself at UCDC, I would love to apply. I'll also certainly recommend your internship program to friends considering remote opportunity. I'm sending this note from my personal email address so you have it on file. Until we meet again at the next virtual happy hour, all my best, Yena. Mike, what do you what do you think about that? <laughs> I love, it's, it's great. Um, one thing I will add to here is so for Yena, one of the things she did in this that is really great is she added personal um, events that happened and personal stories. As someone named Michael, it is extremely important when I am writing thank yous or writing correspondence to people trying to be remembered that I use my first and my last name. And then mm -hmm. I add those elements because in five years, when your supervisor's going back through thank yous or you reach out to them and you say, I'm not sure if you remember me, if you if they can read this and know of an actual event that they led or that they were involved in or a personal story between the two of you, that's gonna make them be like, oh yeah, Yena, I remember her. Um, so that's great, yeah. That's a good point. Okay, cool. Um, and I also wanted to plug in that there's cool ways to stay connected with our UCDC program even after the term ends. And so we encourage alumni to come back and volunteer in various ways, either as a mentor or a panel speaker. And after the end of the term, I make sure to update our main listserv to include um, past participants. So you'll be able to receive UCDC um, updates and other opportunities. And there's also a LinkedIn page in which you can connect with other UCDC alumni, which I will go ahead and drop the link um, in a couple of seconds. But there's one for UCDC alumni and one for UC alumni in Washington, DC. 
And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. Thanks. Okay, now is the chance for all of you to ask your questions. Um, and I know no one likes to be the first question. So please be that person, show the initiative. Um, don't be shy. And we will, uh, if you ask your question anonymously, we will read it out loud. Uh, if you leave your name on it, we will unmute you and you will get to speak and share your thoughts or your question with us. Um, I see all of your names. So those students that were mine that I've worked with, I expect questions from you. And you know who you are. Mike, while we're waiting for the question to come in, you know, one thing that you touched upon that um, I, I meant to also, I wanted to kind of reiterate was um, when you were talking about updating resumes and, you know, just kind of having this master resume, it actually reminded me of, of something, um, you know, a lot of the times, as someone who used to look at resumes on um, for internships on Capitol Hill, I would look at hundreds at a time for a given semester. Um, you know, but I wasn't necessarily looking for certain things that checked the box. Like I didn't, it didn't matter if you necessarily had prior policy experience. I wanted to see relatable experience. And so I think that's something that is really important when you're thinking about what your next steps are. So, you know, for example, in our office right now, um, I work with interns um, on doing a bunch of social media management, social media tracking and engagement type work. Now that might not be directly applicable um, in another, you know, another job, but it's but how can the skills that 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 these interns learned by doing this, how can it be applicable? Um, you know, for example, when we're looking at internships now, um, something that I think is really actually um, beneficial is if you've had, you know, customer service experience because you've worked with people, um, and that's really important for you know a, a very social and dynamic office. So. That's just something I wanted to plug when you're trying to think about how do you take this internship and take those skills and translate them into a career. Um, I think that you really just want to think broadly about what are you learning even just beyond kind of the task at hand. It's those critical thinking or the analytical skills or the research. And so, you know, don't, as someone who has done this, don't sell yourself short on what you're really learning and what it means for your next steps. That's great. Nicole, I agree 100%. I mean, I always rely on uh, go back to my KTVU internship. Um, it was news. It has not, I've not done anything in my career since those two summers working at a news channel that have involved media. But a few of the things I did learn were how to make cold calls because part of my job as an intern was calling local police stations and asking if there was anything newsworthy going on, which was seriously depressing. Another thing that I used to do is literally run scripts from the writers to the anchors in the middle of broadcast. And it was my job while running to read through those scripts to check for any major errors because those anchors were just gonna read them and they weren't gonna have time to edit them. And if I noticed anything, there was a writer right before I entered the newsroom who I would have to quickly show it to them and make a last minute change. So I learned how to operate under pressure. And those are skills, those two skills of calling, cold calling and being able to operate under pressure that I have used in every single job I've had uh, since my internships. Um, we have a question from Jade. So Jade, I'm gonna unmute you and you can ask your question out loud. Thank you. Um, okay, so hi, hi everyone. Um, thank you for giving great feedback. Um, I've been taking notes and I had a question which was, as you can see in the chat, I feel like I'm close with about like eight or nine different attorneys that I'm working with just because I either meet with them weekly, I'm working on projects for them and giving presentations with all eight of them. So would you recommend that I write uh, eight different cards or should I just pick my favorites? Um, yeah, what would you recommend? Yetta, are you still with us? I am, I am, yeah. All right. So I've never really worked closely with eight individuals. I think the closest um, 
experience that I've had is working at a real estate um, appraisal firm. And so I worked closely with three principal um, officers as well as, um, you know, when I, so when I had finished my internship in college, I had written a thank you card to the three main officers, as well as um, the woman who really kind of helped me get onboarded, um, who's the receptionist as well. And so I think it, it really depends on your personal bandwidth. If you feel like you you can write eight different cards and go for it but um at the end of the day it's just who 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 are you really grateful for um in terms of you know them showing you um how your internship was and etc like who who do you want to keep in contact with and also you can also choose to write specific thank you cards um, by hand to select individuals and then to the rest of the folks you can write them an email if that's easier um, another thing I would add is, Jade, for you to think about and for all of you, think about who might end up on your references list later on. Um, generally, when you apply for a job, they want three to five references. Um, so if there's one or two of those lawyers that you've been working with that would more likely end up on your list than the others, those are the two you really want to give that thank you card to because those are the ones you want to have a memory of you. Um, and I will say, Yenna mentioned it earlier. Uh, I think Nicole mentioned it as well. I save all of my thank you cards that I receive. Um, I actually have, it's obviously not here because I'm at home, but in my office, I have what's called a, my feel good file. Um, and any thank you card I receive, anytime a student sends me a photo or a postcard or an email saying something nice about their experience working with me, um, I actually print them out and I keep them in a file. And so if I'm having a bad day at work, um, or if I'm just frustrated with the world, I pull out my feel good file and it is a reminder of everything I've done nicely. And I know everyone that I've spoken to in the professional world, we all have a variation of a feel good file. We all have the thank you cards posted on a cork board, um, the little tokens you've given us over the time somewhere in our office um, as a reminder of what we're doing and the good work we do with our students. Um, so every employer will really appreciate anything you do that says thank you. Um, so do we have another question from an anonymous attendee. I'm looking for another internship after this one. Would it be appropriate to ask my supervisor if they have any leads on other internship sites? Um, Nicole, I'm going to pass this over to you as a intern supervisor. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so your supervisor 100% can be um, a helpful resource for you. Uh, what I would almost suggest is that you actually go into your into that meeting where you're going to make an ask, but frame it a little differently. Do a little bit of research about where where are you interested in interning? Do you have a list of organizations? Show show up to that meeting that you, like demonstrating that you've done a little bit of research. So for example, you know. I, you've just interned in um, federal government relations, you know, you really want to end up on Capitol Hill, you're thinking one of the California senators or your home representative's office, you know, do you have any, you, I would consider asking the supervisor if they have any, you know, connections or anyone that you could perhaps talk to about that, about one of those positions, or you could say, or do you have any, um, do, do, can you think of any other, maybe other organizations similar to that, that would provide, um, you know, that type of experience, but I think, they can, or your supervisors are definitely a great resource, but I think that you should show up demonstrating that you have, um, you know, you're meeting them at the table and showing that you're committed um, to doing some of the work as well. Um, and then I can't imagine that they would not be willing to help you if they have any um, connections or anything like that. Um, I know that that's something that I do and others in our office do all the time. I also will add that um, these types of conversations would be more helpful to have at um, during your end of the internship evaluation instead of, you know, selling all your um, good qualities on a thank you card or thank you email as well. Just make those separate. All right. Any other questions? You're welcome, Jacob. <laughs> We've already started getting thank yous. We did a good job. All right, we'll give it another minute. Um, if you guys don't have any questions, um, you are free to go. Um, but yeah, if you have other questions, we'll stick around for a minute or two and answer them. Ooh, can, I, can I add one thing? Um, I think it'd be 
really nice to also send along a thank you card to your professors as well if you're thinking about grad school and perhaps reaching out to them for um, recommendations as well. I'm going to stop the recording, but feel free to still ask questions.